Terrell Thomas, these urban times. We're sitting down right now with former NBA star. And I, I don't want to I don't want to give you the title of an activist, but I definitely want a, a great man, a great black man that's standing at the forefront of a lot of different things that I know you definitely didn't see uh, coming your way when the year began. And he goes by the name of Steven Jackson. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, the nation knows right now uh, who you are and, and what you represent. Unfortunately, a few weeks ago, we all witnessed the uh, the murder of George Floyd, a brother that you knew very well, that you grew up with, someone from your from your neighborhood, someone that you love. And you immediately, you know, um, you immediately stepped up to the forefront. And it's different, I, I would say, you know, because we all, we all unfortunately witnessed it with, with social media and that caused an immediate uproar, um, not only, you know, in amongst uh, yourself and his loved ones, but across the, our nation and across the world. Um, can you talk to me about what you've seen so far uh, with the protests that have taken place, the peaceful protests that have taken place uh, in the honor of George Floyd, and then also to speak against uh, all the police brutality and discrimination that's been taking place in our world? Um, well, I, my brother's not, I mean, I'm not surprised. I mean, the way George was, he stood for love. He respected everybody. He tried to be a protector, provide for everybody. So the, the, the support he's getting, I'm not surprised. Um, I'm, I'm thankful that it's definitely not going in vain. Um, you know, like it's, it's this crazy situation. A lot been going on, but just to be in this situation, I never expected. I'm definitely embracing it, you know, trying to lead by the right direction, but his whole, his whole death has really sparked a lot of change and, and, and upset a lot of people. And it's changed people's lives, you know, his daughter's life, you know, even he's put me on a position that I never expected to be in. So. Um, I'm happy a lot of good is coming from it, but I wish I could have him back. I respect that. We we saw you in Minnesota immediately. You know, uh, you went to the to to Minneapolis to put your feet on the ground and to to meet with protesters, also to make sure that the officers were arrested. I commend you for that. You 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 made sure you went up there with. I don't want to say strutting your stuff, but sometimes it takes a little power. You had some celebrity friends, you had some activists who knew what they were doing, and uh, you went up there and handled business. I saw. A few NBA guys actually joined you uh, originally when that happened. A few of the Minnesota Timberwolves and Carl Anthony Towns was there, and I uh, I want to commend that brother because some people may not know he lost his mother unfortunately uh, to yeah. the pandemic this year, but he was he was out on the forefront with you. Can you talk to me about how great it has been? Uh, of course, a, a horrible situation, but how great it has been to have your NBA peers and, and other athletes and entertainers uh, supporting you and also making making their voices be be, be heard. Um, yeah, shout out to Cat. Rest in peace to his mom. Yeah, Cat. Cat. He's a he's a different youngster, man. You know, he's he got an old soul. He was definitely raised right, and uh, I definitely appreciate his support. Uh, I had a march yesterday. Al Harrington, Charles Oakley came out. Um, I expected more support because this incident is in this situation where we standing for is way more serious than a game, way more serious than anything. So I, I expected more support, but. I had my, my brothers Lou Williams reach out. I had LeBron reach out. I had Chris Paul reach out. I had certain people reach out to let me know they with me and let me know they putting something together to support me and to stand with me. So um, it's bigger than all of us, man. Like I said, I, I didn't expect to be the leader of this, uh, or being in the role, having this role, but I'm embracing it. And I've always stood for what's right. I always stood for, for love and, and treating everybody the same way I want to be treated. So. I think God put me in this position for a reason, so I'm just embracing it, man. Um, now, unfortunately, we we know he's all, he's been buried, uh, he's in the ground, but the movement is continuing. We see protests continuing to take place today uh, throughout different cities. I know this weekend there are a lot of protests that are also set up through, throughout the nation. What can we do, and what can people do to kind of make sure that uh, George's death wasn't in vain, and that we continue to keep this momentum going? Uh, stand with me. Keep the protests going. Keep the peaceful protests going. Um, we got to continue to know that we're going to stand together and there's more people that stand for love than people that stand for hate. And as you see, 18 countries, 50 states, all 50 states protest at the same time has never been done. So they hear us. And uh, we got to get some laws changed. We got we to get some equality going on. And, and it's real common sense. It ain't right to science. Just treat people how you want to be treated. And we've been treated wrong for so long. And I think this is the turning point. This is our moment. We have to take advantage of it. We can't let up. Uh, just if, if you say you love everybody, you love black people, you support black people, and don't just say it, come stand with us, come march with us. You know, it's, it's strength in numbers. And I, I think 
the fact that everybody is, is understanding the magnitude of what happened to my brother and understand their magnitude of what I'm standing and what I'm standing for. I think everybody is standing for the same thing and um, we ride together and uh, we got to continue to ride together. It, it can't be one person, it can't be two people. We got to continue to do it together and that's how we make it know us. Uh, you mentioned the likes of LeBron James and Lou Williams reaching out to you and, and showing their love. Um, of course, it's, it's a lot of talks about the NBA season possibly starting back up. Uh, I recently spoke to Dwight Howard, a gentleman I know you know very well, and Dwight was vocal about uh, we need to pause. You know, we need, we need to take this time and and regroup as a people. We need to, you know, uh, make sure that people feel the pain and hear, you know, the cries of, of the life lost in, with your brother George Floyd and, you know, all the lives that have been lost prior, unfortunately. You know, so he's taking a stand. I'm not going to put any words in any other NBA players' mouths that I haven't heard from them at all. But there are there have been players who have been vocal and saying, you know, this isn't the time to move forward. What are your thoughts on on that? Should sports entertainment take a halt and you know we we actually pay more attention to these these more pivotal issues? I mean, I don't I don't think there's no other statement you can make but not play. You know, that's the biggest statement you can make. I think it has to be more attention on this. Like, I've had several coaches reach out. Steve Kerr, uh, the co the coach for the Timberwolves, they all reached out. And uh, they understand that this moment is the moment that we got to take advantage of. And they don't, and we none of us really have the answers. But speaking out, standing, uh, protesting, making the stance, uh, all those things matter. Do something, do something just to, to stop the world from, from its normal routine. You know what I mean? Make people understand how serious this is. And um, I think certain people understand that, certain people around the game understand that, but it's, it's bigger than any game that can be played because all these athletes have, all these black athletes have kids. And it's gonna be a different situation when, it, when I pray to God it never does. But if it was to hit that door stuff, then they'll be feeling like me and it'd be a different situation where, okay, everything stopped. My world stopped, everything stopped for me the morning I found out this happened to my brother. My world's turned upside down. You know, I ain't, I ain't been home. I ain't seen my kids. I haven't slept really. I, I've been, I just started to eat good. Thanks to Charles Oakley. He came in and been cooking for me. But um, it's a lot. It's a lot, bro. And, and and it can take a toll on anybody. You know what I mean? It can take a toll on anybody, bro. Can can you talk and, and, and mention also, there's been a, a few entertainers who have been in your corner as well. Cats, you've known for a long time. The likes of Bun B. Uh, a legend in the hip hop community, a legend in the, in the Texas world, and in the black community in itself. Uh, Trey the Truth, we've seen him as well. Can you, can, and you just also mentioned Charles Oakley. Can you talk about how important it's, had, it's been to have that strong nucleus around you, those strong black men? Yeah, because they know that it's bigger than all of us. We stand for something that, that that's just trying to change the future for our kids. Something that's been trying to be done for 500 plus years. You know, and 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 you know, Jamie Fox, Channing Tatum. Uh, a lot of people came out. Uh, Bun B, of course, Bun B is like a big brother to me. I, I think the as soon as I had the first, uh, I, I was announcing I was coming down here and do my first rally, I got a text message from Bun, and Bun was like, every moment in your life that you've been through, everything you've been through has built you for this moment. You're suiting up for the biggest game in your life. He told me that, and it made me cry, it made me emotional, it, made, it had me all over the place, but it inspired me to take this own head up, chest out. And uh, I think the people around me know that I didn't ask to be in this position, but they know I'm built for it. And they continue to pour, uh, pour on support, pour on love around me. You know, like I said, all, all the celebrities that's been calling, I appreciate it because I know that I'm doing something right and I know I, I, know I can't stop because there's so many people that I admire that's telling me that they admire me for what I'm doing. A gentleman whose name has come up a whole lot throughout this time has been Cullen Kaepernick. Of course, he tried to bring attention to priest brutality and using his platform in 2016. And uh, since then, many people feel like he's been blackballed and he hasn't had the opportunity to actually get back in the NFL. Um, have, has Cullen Kaepernick reached out to you? Have you had a moment to speak with him? Uh, and do you think that possibly if NFL comes back, him being back would, would give a bigger platform to George and other people who have, who have lost their lives due to these tragedies? I haven't talked to Colin. Um, I've always been a supporter of his. I think the NFL coming out with that apology, they should have apologized directly to Colin Kaepernick. It should have been a general apology. It, it sounded corny. Um, he, he's the one y'all blackballed. He's the, he, he's the one's career y'all halted. 
you know, you are, you almost messed up this, this man's whole life, but it's, it's certain companies and it's a lot of people around the world that understood what he, st what, what was, what he was kneeling for and what he stood, what he stands for. And uh, I think the NFL should have made that apology sincerely just to Colin Kaepernick. And the only way to fix it is to make sure he get another job. That's the only way they can fix it. Um, I think it was just perfect timing to make that statement, but it's karma. Can nobody escape karma? And the NFL is dealing with a lot of karma right now for the way they handle that situation. What are your thoughts on how the the court systems are actually treating the case right now in Minnesota? Do you are you, are you happy with it? We have unfortunately seen one of the officers is out on bail already. Um, so like, what 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 are your feelings been on, on how how they're handling the situation in Minnesota? I mean, nothing surprises me at this point. We've seen so many of them beat beat it and get off. You know, get up, just get fired, don't go to jail, don't get charged. We've seen so much of that. I'm not surprised with anything. That's why I'm still here in Minnesota. That's why I'm fighting for justice. I mean. Nine out of ten times, just like we on Zoom right now, you you expected your audience and all your followers to watch this video and believe that this is real, what they're saying, that this is actually Steven Jackson sitting there talking to you, right? Why is it so hard with the murder of my brother? It was filmed 20 different angles, you know? So, so and, and, and I said, the world has lost common sense. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm here to remind people about the world, have, what, remind the world what they lost Remind the world that we, that we stand together, we can push Trump out, we can push all these evil people out and do what's right. And I'm here in Minnesota to make sure they speed up this trial and get this conviction and get these people put in jail. It ain't rocket science, man. I, and, and I'm here, I'm gonna keep using my voice, keep bringing my celebrity friends here, and we're gonna stand on Minnesota until they make me mayor, I run for governor or something and take over this motherfucker. Cause that's what I, they, they gonna, something's gonna change and this is the moment. And I'm gonna get justice for my brother and it's gonna spark to getting uh, policies changed, laws changed, but we can get equality and get treated right now, get treated like animals. And that's what I'm fighting for, bro. Terrell Thomas sitting down with Stephen Jackson. You're tuning in to These Urban Times. Before I let you go, man, change is coming. It, it, it is happening and, and, and on some level just happening swiftly. Um, I, I won't say uh, these things are, are immediately benefiting George, George and, and his family, but we see companies starting to celebrate Juneteenth, you know, like, uh, we we've seen some companies a uh, couple 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 weeks ago the entertainment industry shut down and they're demanding that more African Americans are are, are in leadership positions. Um, you mentioned about voting. This is a very important uh, year as far as the election is concerned and us looking to get President Trump up out of there and get and get some common sense back in, into our White House and our leadership. What's next? What 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 steps would you like to see the protesters, the peaceful protesters, people like myself, entertainers? What's next for us to keep this going and keep this momentum going to November? Well, we got we got to we got to just keep at it. Keep processing, keep marching, keep keep putting it in their face keep, so they can keep seeing us and understand that we're not going to stop until we get actual change. Uh we 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 you know, people ask me about voting. Yeah, we got to get Trump out the I get Trump out the White House. But we got to make sure that the next person that's going in there is going in there and the first time he sit down, he change he he he, he he's catered to with the things that we need to be done. And that's point blank. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm all for getting Trump out the office, but I ain't for just putting somebody in Trump's spot that they gonna go in and do what we need to do. You know what I mean? So, 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 I think for the most part, we gotta continue to protest, continue to let them know what we fighting for, continue to stand together and show solidarity, show strength in numbers, and uh, all around the world. And then getting Trump out the hop, out the White House is a start, but it, we gotta make sure that the right person is for us. Hey, man, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. I, da I damn sure appreciate you. Thank you for what you're doing. I, I, don't, I don't know if you realize, being, being as though you're living in the moment, just how big your voice is, how necessary it is, and how many people are riding with you. We're riding with you. We got a lot of love for you, brother. Keep doing what you're doing. We're going to keep doing our prayers. Man, we've been rocking for a long time, man. It's all love. Same love here, bro. Appreciate it. Thank you, man.